Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. And if you're on Facebook, check out our community group. Just look for Daily Bible Podcasts. We would love to have you be a part. You can just request to join, answer a few questions like, hey, why do you want to join us? You can just say, because I listen. And then (laughs) we'll say, okay, come on in. And we would love to have you there. Mm -hmm. Yes, most definitely. So today we are reading 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 12 through 28. And then we open up a new book, 2 Thessalonians 1, 2 Thessalonians 2, 2 Thessalonians 3, and then we go back to Acts, Acts 18, verses 4 through 23. So yesterday we started 1 Thessalonians, and Paul is encouraging the believers. He's reminding them to cling to their faith because Christ will be coming back. So stand tall, encourage each other, live pure lives, and his final advice to them is to honor their leaders in the Lord's work, to show respect and love and live peacefully with each other. And having known quite a few pastor's wives, there are many people in the church that are less than peaceful. And Mm -hmm. all that to say, there is reason why God wants us to honor our spiritual leaders, because we are like hurting a bunch of cats. So all that to say, do let that, that, I mean, when he says, honor your leaders, show respect, live peacefully, he is, he means it because we don't, we really don't. So you're not saying that the pastor's wives are the unpeaceful ones. You're saying the people they're dealing with are not peaceful. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Just, I'm, just I'm clarify. saying that the ones that they're dealing with, the, <laughs> the us sitting in the chairs, sitting yeah. in the chairs are, I would just say there's a lot more angst and a lot more pain that is, is been inflicted on pastors and their wives than what we realize. And it's really opened my eyes being friends with some pastor's wives and going, oh, and not that they're sharing stories. They're not gossiping. Please, please don't hear that. But just sharing that there has been some pain. And, mm-hmm. and different things like that. So, um, and then Paul cl- is closing, his closing can be summed up with rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. And then, oh, by the way, stay away from every form of evil. Um, I, I lived with a gal once and a, um, on top of her mantle in, um, on, in her living room, on top of the fireplace mantle was the words, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. And it was this big, huge wall hanging. And it was Mm. beautiful because it reminded me, rejoice Mm -hmm. always, pray without ceasing, give thanks. And I was just like, oh, that needs to be like tattooed somewhere on my forehead or my eyeballs. So in between the first and second letters to the Thessalonians, things got worse. Persecution grew. False teachers were starting to spread more and more lies. Some of the lies they're sharing, they're spreading about, about Paul. So Paul writes that God uses persecution to show his justice and to make you worthy of his kingdom. Just, just think of all that he did in Egypt and bringing the Israelites through the wilderness. Remember the exiles. Remember he promised it would get bad, but he also promised to bring the remnant home. And he did. So Paul has encouraged the Thessalonians to look up, keep your eyes up and know that rest is coming. So again, we're seeing more encouragement continuing on through the second letter. And then he reminds them of Christ's second coming and encourages them all the more to stand strong because in the end of times, there will be more persecution and there will be more lies because Satan will continue Mm. to prowl and he will be strong. And so Paul says, so stand firm, keep a strong grip on the teaching that was passed on to you, which is good advice to us too, because we need to stand firm and we need to keep that strong grip on the word of God. It's so good. And I love that, you know, Paul is addressing these issues. He's not like letting them slide. He's talking about, talked about, um, but he also requests prayer for the 
Thessalonians for the spread of the gospel and for protection from those who oppose it. So he's, you know, telling them these are issues, but also pray for me. He reminds them of his own example of hard work and not being a burden to others while he was with them. Paul addresses a specific problem in the Thessalonian church related to idleness and laziness. Mm. Um, so I guess people were lazy even before Netflix. I don't know. But, <laughs> I think um, we always find something that we can do and be lazy with. Find, we'll find something to be lazy with. Uh, yeah. And so he, um, he talks to them about, you know, don't stop working, keep working. Um, you know, there's people that obviously that stopped working and they're be dependent on others for support. So Paul admonishes them to follow his example of working diligently for their own sustenance and to be responsible citizens. He advises that those unwilling to work should not be given food, which I'm like, okay, they must have been really like trying to take advantage of that. We have all things common thing going on there. Um, and then the chapter concludes with a heartfelt prayer for the Thessalonians well-being in a final greeting in Paul's handwriting as a sign of authenticity. So usually he had scribes, and, but he would sign his name at the end so they knew that it was from Paul. And then back in Acts, we have Paul's ministry in Corinth, and he continues to preach the gospel and reasons with both Jews and Greeks in the synagogue. However, he faces opposition and rejection from some of the Jews, and so he shakes out his garments and declares that their blood is on their own heads, symbolizing his innocence. Remember how Mm -hmm. when Jesus sent the disciples out two by two, he says if they don't listen um, to shake off your garments and to, you know, keep going. So this mm-hmm. is Paul also doing this. Um, Which we reminds- see over and over, like when he was stoned yesterday, not yesterday, but, you know, a few days ago when he, we, that's what he did. He just shook it off and kept moving on. That's amazing. It's amazing, really, because it seems like we like will want to let it yeah. fester or like yes. well, you know he's just like okay you guys got to deal with it yourself then um so paul re- remains in corinth for it says considerable time encouraging encouraged by a vision from the lord assuring him of safety and a fr- fruitful ministry he also meets aquila and priscilla the tent makers and so this is the axe part talking about what had been earlier Mm -hmm. Um, and he stays with them and silas and timothy eventually join him in corinth and together they continue to preach the gospel Um, the chapter also mentions paul's vow and his journey journey to have his haircut which is likely related to fulfilling a vow or custom so I don't know i didn't realize haircuts were in the in the bible too um but from there he sits sail for Syria, but briefly stops in Ephesus where he leaves Aquila and Priscilla. There's a lot going on. A lot of happening. There's a lot happening. Anyway. Okay. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of all that's happening. So I'm going to continue thinking of all that's happening, but we need to take a break. We need to hear from our sponsor. And when we come back, we'll have the word of the day. So stay tuned. Okay, so our word of the day is guidance, the direction provided by a guide. And to guide is to lead the way. And as we as we look at guidance, I found this at counselingoneanother.com. And, um, and he was saying the unchanging standard of guidance for a believer in Christ is the written word of God the scriptures. And this is the primary means by which a Christian determines the will of God. It's through the scriptures. We are guided through the scriptures. And Paul wrote to the Thessalonians um, that we read today and told them to keep a strong grip on the teachings that had been, that they were passing down. And, and we see, we see this, this guidance throughout all of the word of God. I mean, think through with me. I mean, the past, let's go back to the Old Testament. King David declares his assurance on God's guidance by saying, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my 
path. We see that scripture is sufficient for our growth and our maturity in Christ. We haven't read it yet, but we will be getting to 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, where it says, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for per- for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. And Jesus made it clear that the Spirit of God would guide us in our understanding of the Word. And and he he left the Holy Spirit. He said it was better that he leave so that the Holy Spirit could come mm-hmm. and live. And we have seen the Holy Spirit so active in the lives of the apostles and in the lives of the people who have come to know Christ as their Lord of Savior, as their Lord and Savior. And as believers, we can never have greater confidence than when we align our lives with the written revelation of God and use God, use the scripture as our guidance. And so we we see that we need to we need to be reading God's words and we need to follow his guidance. But also notice how Paul was guiding people with God's words, but he was guiding people. And so we also need to take him into account as our example. And scripture is the mind of God in written form. Like the, mm, the Paul writing, so good. Yeah. other people are writing, but they, it was like God was speaking to them. And so when we align with scripture, we are aligning with God's mind. We are, you know, this is a source of assurance in God's guidance, doing mm-hmm. what God says. And so in first Corinthians two, um, 10 through 16, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it talks about in there, the spirit of Christ helps us to understand God's word. For he who has understood the mind of Christ so as to instruct him. No, let me read that again. For who has understood the mind of Christ so as to instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. And we have Christ's spirit. So when we sit down with the word of God, um, sometimes we don't understand it, but we can say, you know, Lord, help us to understand this, help us to have your spirit in us, to help us to in- be instructed on what it says. And then in second Thessalonians two fifteen, as we read today, it says with all these things in mind, dear brothers and sisters, stand firm and keep a strong grip on the teaching we pass on to you both in person and by letter. And so he was there for, it talks about multiple times, um, over the last couple of days and today, he was there, it said, for a significant amount of time. I don't know. It was for a while. So he's preaching. He's teaching. They are. They were listening to his teaching. He's like, stay strong in that. Stand firm. And then he starts writing them letters. And that word stand firm is a military term. We mm. also hear it in Ephesians 6, 11. Um, it says, Paul writes, put on the full armor of God so you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Mm-hmm. And then in Ephesians 6, we also read about the belt of truth, which is the Bible, the belt of truth. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life, like truth. We can go a million different directions in this world. We can believe a ton of different things. There's people that believe every weird, crazy <laughs> thing that you could think of. Um, yet truth will always lead us in the right way. God's word will always lead us in the right way. When we read God's word and ask Christ's spirit in us to reveal truth, he will lead us in the right way. And then we have to stand firm in that. We have to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. It talked about Satan's going to be prowling around. Um, and we're going to see this continually coming up in as we go. The enemy wants us to believe in lies. He wants us to stray away from God's word. And it starts with a doubt. It starts with, well, this this sounds cool over here. This person believes this. Let me go there. Well, if it doesn't align with God's word, it is not right. We need to stand firm, put on that belt of truth. We need to um, focus on what guidance we have through the word of God and everything that we should hear. We should all filter it through the word of God. God's word is our perfect guidance. God's word is our perfect teacher. And and it needs to all go through, like you just said, Trisha, through the word of God. And just think like we are being guided as we're recording, as we're going through stuff, as I'm going through stuff in life, as I'm dealing with the situation with my son, um, I'm thinking of what we just read in the scripture. As I'm talking, having a conversation with my daughter, I'm reminded of things I had 
read and we talked about as we record the podcast, like it all is applicable. And if we don't have God's word going into us, we don't have that resource to pull out from when we need it in these yeah. situations. So we're like, oh my goodness, I don't even know what to say to my child in this situation. Thankfully, though, if we are in God's word, those words will be there and we'll know what to say. We'll know how to respond, whether it is with, um, you know, calling someone out, whether it is gentleness, whether it's tender, or whatever it is, God's word in us will come out when we need it, but we have to put it there. And I'm so, have to put it there. Yeah. so thankful for all those on this journey who are with us as mm-hmm. we're reading God's word daily and we're digging into it. And as we are seeing it and using it in our everyday lives. Yeah. So important. So important. So Trisha, will you pray for us just that mm-hmm. we would allow God to guide us and that we would allow his words to just penetrate our hearts today. Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your guidance. I just, Mm -hmm. I thank you just as you used um, Paul and other apostles and disciples to guide these new believers and to teach them and to write letters to them. um, We now have those things to look to. We have um, your revealed truth given to them just as it was used for the Thessalonians and other people, Corinthians, um, it is also useful to us today because your truth is truth. Um, your truth doesn't change. Your truth is steadfast. I thank you that we have it, Lord. I pray that we will continually get in your word, that you'll just put this hunger and a desire um, within us to go to your word. And I thank you for your guidance, that your word in us will guide us in our everyday lives, that those truths that we um, plant into our hearts will grow and we will able be able to guide those around us and offer great advice, offer your advice instead of our own thoughts, Lord. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you that you're always leading us and directing mm-hmm. us. Thank you that you're helping us to stand strong mm-hmm. against the lies in this world around us and against the, the schemes of our enemy, Lord. Mm-hmm. Thank you that you are always with us, guiding us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly Bible reading schedule that we are following. Tomorrow, we are reading Acts 18, 24 through 28, Acts 19, 1 through 20, and then we start Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 1, 1 Corinthians 2, and 1 Corinthians 3. And I want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio. You wouldn't be listening to Daily Bible Podcast without their partnership. Go to lifeaudio.com. You're going to find great podcasts that are going to encourage you in your walk with God today. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.